Hello students, in the last class we have discussed about preservation by using sugar, how these beverages like your fruit juices, squash, cordial or even other products like jams, jellies are being preserved by using sugar. So in this lecture we will be discussing about preservation by using salt and vinegar. How this salt and vinegar will help in the preservation of pickles. So what are basically these pickles are and uh, what are the various methods by which these pickles can be prepared and what are the different types of pickles and then what are the problems that you encounter uh, during the storage of these pickles. So that all uh, things that are the things we are going to discuss in this particular lecture. What are the various products that are being preserved by using salt? As you can see uh, there are products like your pickles, sauces, chutneys. So these are the various products that are being preserved by using salt or even a combination of salt, spices and vinegar. So this salt is mostly used as preservative uh, in all these products like your pickles or sauces or chutneys. Uh, it is along with a combination of acid. So we need minimum concentration of around 12% of salt uh, for effective preservation of these uh, uh, sauces or chutneys or even the pickles. So usually in the market you will find uh, different products so which are preserved by using uh, salt or like your sauces or chutneys or even your regular pickles. So these are all the products that can be preserved by using salt. Let's see the preservative action of salt how it is helpful in preserving various products like your pickles chutneys or sauces first property of it is antioxidant so it in inhibits like your uh, polyphenol oxidase enzyme so which causes brown coloration it inhibits this enzyme and prevents uh, browning of the products or browning of the freshly cut fruits or vegetables and the second aspect is of high osmotic pressure it creates high osmotic pressure uh, during the preservation so it creates in such a way that the microbe will be losing its moisture that is en encapsulated in its uh, membrane so the water or the moisture present in the microbe is being sent out is being pressurized out because of the high osmotic pressure that is created by the salt so there is high uh, concentration of sugar around the cell of a microbe and the water from the microbe is sent through the semi permeable membrane so that causes dehydration of the microbe and it gets killed so that is one aspect another one is dehydrating the food so what it will do the whatever the moisture that is available in the food it is being bound in the lattice structure of your sodium and chloride so it will basically is going to tie up the moisture that is freely available and it will make it in such a way that the moisture will not be available to the microbe so that microbe dies of thirst so there is no moisture available so there is no uh, metabolism of the microbe due to lack of moisture another aspect is this salt will cause insolubility of oxygen so it forms a thin film of coating on the surface of this product in which it is uh, going to preserve which causes preservation so it prevents aerobic microorganisms since it forms a thin film of coating over a cut vegetable it prevents in the solubility of oxygen so there is no entry of oxygen so there is no chance for the growth of microorganisms which which require oxygen such organisms are aerobic microorganisms and then it has got a chlorine so this chlorine is a very good oxidizing agent and this chlorine has got toxic properties against microbes so therefore the microbes even cannot grow in the conditions where there is sodium chloride that is salt because of the uh, chlorine which is a powerful oxidizing agent so it oxidizes the microbes and then they cannot survive and another aspect is it causes the permeability of the microbes so microbes cell membrane is uh, more permeable because of this salt and then that causes 
uh, high permeability and then loses its uh, contents and then uh, finally this microbe is, uh, microbes cannot survive except that the uh, microbes which can survive in high salt concentrations like your uh, haloderic microbes they can survive in high salt concentration so these are the properties to which makes salt as a preservative which helps in the preservation of this uh, salt on pickles pickles as soon as you hear this word pickle your mouth starts watering and your gastric juices starts flowing from your digestive system so that makes the system ready for the incoming food for the digestion so these pickles are basically the substances or the fruits or vegetables so which are preserved in salt and vinegar and this process is called as pickling so basically these pickles are prepared either by fermentation or by partial fermentation or by complete fermentation so basically the differentiating factor is the fermentation whether with fermentation or without fermentation or with partial fermentation so along with the salt and vinegar so we add certain other additives so to improve the taste and palatability like your spices oil or sugar even jaggery in some of the areas some of the states some of the places you add uh, sugar or jaggery uh, to make this kind of pickles right so the commercially you have a uh, you know, well known pickles like your mango pickles or cauliflower or even olive pickles or cucumber pickles carrot or amla pickles or even your lime pickles or so many other leafy vegetables pickles which are popular in different parts of the world what makes the pickles to store for a long periods of time the reason is the process called pickling so what happens in the process of pickling in the process of pickling the fermentation that is carried out by the lactic acid bacteria so lactic acid bacteria is present on the surface of the fruits or vegetables so this lactic acid bacteria uses the substrate that is present in the fruits and vegetables and at optimum temperatures like 30 degrees celsius it starts converting into lactic acid so this is the important acid that is being produced by the fermentation that is brought about by lactic acid bacteria and this along with the that is lactic acid and along with that brine will help in preservation of the pickles so how this these two will help in the preservation of the pickles the first aspect is that it gives a protection against the putrefying bacteria it protects the pickles from the spoilage that is caused by the bacteria another aspect is this brine and as well as the lactic acid that is being produced that will give a characteristic aroma characteristic flavor to the pickles and thereby they help in preserving the pickles for a long periods of time just because of the reason that that is the fermentation that is caused by the lactic acid bacteria that is present on the surface of the fruits and vegetables which eventually starts producing lactic acid so that is the reason for the long storage of the fruits and vegetables by the process of pickling what are the various methods by which pickles can be prepared pickles can be prepared by using either fermentation or without fermentation by using fermentation you have two methods that is using salt that is dry salting or using brine so you use salt either in the form of a dry salt or in the form of a brine and the third method is use the salt but without fermentation so these are the three methods so which can be followed for pickling process the first method of pickling process is by dry salting or curing in this method the juice from the fruits or vegetables is extracted by adding salt so you add salt to the prepared fruits and vegetables so that the water that is present in the fruits 
starts oozing out and gets mixed into the added salt that means you are not going to add water to the prepared vegetables so the water that is present in the fruits or vegetables itself will come out of the fruit tissues and gets mixed into the salt that you have added that is the dry salt you have added there becomes a brine so you don't add the water you will be just adding the salt so it automatically prepares the brine so this brine forms the basis for the lactic acid bacteria that is present in the fruit surfaces and cause lactic acid fermentation producing lactic acid which is the main process of pickling so the lactic acid produced will help in the preservation of the pickles pickling by dry salting procedure involves three major steps first step involves preparation of the fruit and addition of dry salt for production of brine so that is addition of salt in the first step and the second step allowing fermentation so it allows to uh, act upon the brine so the lactic acid bacteria and then starts producing lactic acid and then after the fermentation the third step involves exclusion of air during the fermentation there is a production of carbon dioxide or air bubbles so those air bubbles needs to be removed completely so that is the third step that is exclusion of air the first step is addition of salt second step is fermentation the third step is exclusion of air in the first step the fruits which are washed and sliced they are placed in layers alternating with the salt you put one layer of the fruit pieces and one layer of salt in that manner you will be putting alternate layers of the fruits as well as the salt and then it will be filled in a barrel so these barrels they need to be filled only to an extent of three fourths of the barrel not completely only the three fourths of the barrel and what is the extent of salt that is to be added into the fruits or the prepared fruits you need to add at the rate of 3 kgs per every 100 kg of the prepared vegetables and then they need to be covered with a cloth and then with a wooden board and along with some weight so that the brine is formed within a period of 24 hours so you need to close the barrel and then put a weight and then it starts producing brine that completes the first step so once the brine is produced and then this barrel is placed in a warm and dry place for further fermentation it starts uh, that lactic acid bacteria starts acting upon the brine that is produced and then lactic acid is being produced as a result of this fermentation there will be production of even carbon dioxide bubbles so which is an indicative of your successful fermentation and it requires around uh, 30, uh, 27 to 32 degrees Celsius for the complete fermentation to occur in a period of around 8 to 10 days. The third step of pickling process by dry salting involves observation of completion of fermentation. How can you determine that the fermentation is complete? So fermentation involves production of lactic acid that is uh, carbon dioxide is also produced along with that in the form of bubbles when the bubbles cease producing so you cannot determine the amount of uh, lactic acid that is being produced or it's being stopped but you can determine whether the production of carbon dioxide is stopped or not so once these bubbles are stopped producing so which can be confirmed by gently tapping the barrels once you tap the barrels if you feel that there is no production of bubbles in the fermented product so then you can confirm that uh, the fermentation is completely done and then you can start removing the entrapped air that is present in the fermented product you need to remove by using different methods so that will help in the long term preservation of the pickles but if you retain 
uh, air that is present in the pickles without removing without excluding the air so this is going to cause a lot of trouble and cause spoilage of the pickles if you don't remove the entrapped air it causes pickle scum so this pickle scum is nothing but it is a mold yeast it's a type of mold yeast which will appear on the surface of the pickles so this won't just keep quiet it starts eating the lactic acid or it starts damaging the lactic acid that is being produced in the fermentation if there is no lactic acid there is no preservation hence the pickle is going to spoil so the key is remove the air or exclude the air in this picture you can see barrels are used for the dry salting process wherein which they are filled with alternate layers of prepared vegetables with salt and then they are filled to an extent of three fourths of the barrel and then they are covered with some cloth and then they are put with a weight and then they are allowed to form brine and then they are later allowed to ferment and then the whatever the bubbles or the air that is being produced during the process of fermentation is being removed by exclusion of air methods there are three methods to remove air from the prepared pickle so those three methods are air seal with edible oil or filling with brine or sealing with molten paraffin wax so in all these three methods you are going to prevent this entry of air or whatever the air that is present in it you are going to remove it and then prepare a seal so that there won't be any further entry of air into the prepared pickle in the first method that is air seal with edible oil is that you are going to pour oil that is any kind of edible oil like your rapeseed oil or mustard oil so to a thickness of 0.6 cm so you pour an oil oil as you know is being lighter in weight it flow it floats on the surface of the brine and it forms a coat or preventive coat so which prevents the entry of air into the brine so thereby it seals the product for further entry of pickles by the air you can expel the air by filling it with brine also you can fill the brine in the barrels to maximum extent possible so that every bubble or every air space that is present in the brine will be replaced by the brine that you are going to add so in this method of uh, filling with brine whatever the barrels are there they are filled to maximum capacity so initially in this process we have filled the fruits or the vegetables along with the salt to an extent of three fourth but here what we are going to do is we are going to fill to the brim we are going to fill the barrel completely with brine so that there will be overflow you will be filling the barrels completely and then even you will be boring 1.25 centimeter hole in the cover that is the lid and then further you try to fill the brine so that whatever the air that is entrapped in the pickle is removed and then it is replaced by the brine like that you will allow it to stand for a period of 48 hours till all the bubbles starts disappearing they start slowly rising uh, to the brim and then once it is uh, raised and all the bubbles escape out of the barrel then the hole that where it is made that is 1.25 centimeter hole that is closed tightly and these barrels are kept in a cool and dry place another way of making an impervious layer of entry of oxygen or any type of air is by pouring molten paraffin wax you cause a seal you literally are going to pour paraffin wax or a wax on the surface of the prepared pickle so this pickle so once uh, the wax becomes harder 
and then it settles it forms a impermeous impermeous layer, layer which will prevent the entry of air and then further causing spoilage of the pickle and later once the uh, pickle is to be used that time this seal can be easily separated this paraffin wax layer that can be easily separated and that can be again melted and can be reused second method of pickling process is by fermentation in brine the first method is also fermentation which involves dry salting and the second method is also by fermentation which involves brine that is salt solution so in this you are going to dip the fruits you are going to place the fruits in a brine solution or in a salt solution of a known concentration for a specific period of time so this type of method is used in fruits like um, cucumber olives or raw mangoes or similar fruits or vegetables which are lacking in their uh, juice so which may not be having sufficient amount of juice to form brine in the case of dry salting so certain juicy fruits can be used which produces a lot of juice into the dry salt and prepare uh, for the formation of uh, brine but in the case of your fermentation in brine so what you do is use the fruits which are fleshy so which are lacking in their juice concentration in this the fruits are going to be placed or immersed in brine solution for a specific period so that they will be fermented for pickling how is this brine is prepared and how this uh, brining process is carried out this brine is prepared basically by dissolving common salt so sodium chloride in water and then it is filtered through the muslin cloth and this amount of brine that is required it depends upon the amount of fruits or vegetables so if you are using a barrel full of uh, vegetables means that means you need to have half the barrel so if you are using 100 liter barrel you mean to have that means it, you mean to you need to have around 50 liters of brine so this brine is prepared so which is around 8 to 10 percent now brine is prepared so which is optimum for the growth of salt tolerant bacteria that is your lactic acid bacteria to grow so initially the concentration of the brine has to be around 8 to 10 percent and slowly during the process of uh, brining this concentration has to be increased initially the concentration remains 8 to 10 percent while adding to the uh, prepared vegetables or fruits and then slowly this strength has to be increased to an extent of 10 percent then followed by 15 percent by adding salt so this entire process takes place for a period of around four to five weeks so don't you remember it is uh, something uh, similar to that of preparation of preserve so similarly here also the strength of the brine is increased gradually from 10 percent to 15 percent over a period of four to five weeks by slowly adding in between you'll be adding salt to the existing brine so that the brine strength is increased from 10 to 15 percent the third method of pickling process is by salting without fermentation and this is an unique method wherein which you won't be allowing the fermentation to occur in the first two instances like where there is a fermentation by dry salting where you use a salt concentration of 3 kg for every 100 kg of the fruits or vegetables that are used and uh, you, in the second instance that is in the case of your brine you use 8 to 10 percent brine strength for the fruits which does not have sufficient amount of juice to prepare brine themselves so in the both the cases the salt concentration varies but whereas in the case of your salting without brining without uh, fermentation so use a salt concentration can you imagine a concentration of 25 kg of uh, salt for every 100 kg of vegetables this high concentration of salt is the one which inhibits the fermentation it's the key which inhibits the fermentation this salting without fermentation is 
carried out in three major steps. The first step is curing wherein there is a inhibition of fermentation. The second step is draining and the third step is packing. In the first step we need to add around 25 kg of the salt for every 100 kg of the vegetables. In this step the vegetables are going to change their appearance. The color is going to change from dark green to light green or yellowish color or they will lose their rot flavor. The rawness of the vegetables is lost and even the texture of the fruits or vegetables will become crispy and they will become very firm. So the entire texture, color and even the flavor, texture, color, flavor of the fruits and vegetables is completely changed as a result of the curing in very high salt. Once the vegetables are properly cured which transforms their color, texture and flavor and then the excess amount of salt has to be reduced, it has to be removed by soaking them either in cold water or in warm water so that excess amount of salt can be drained off. Once you drain the excess amount of salt from the prepared vegetables and then next step is packing. We are going to pack the prepared vegetables in 100 grain vinegar. The strength of the vinegar is expressed in terms of grain. So which is nothing but 100 grain is nothing but 10% strength. So this vinegar which helps in prevention of shriveling. It helps basically in preventing the shriveling of the fruits or vegetables and also helps in the better absorption of the vinegar. So these prepared vegetables they need to be stored in 100 grain vinegar. The prepared pickles by any one of the three methods either by dry salting or by brine or by salting without fermentation or being preserved with sufficient amount of uh, salt, vinegar or even the lactic acid present in them will help them to preserve for a longer period of time. So they act as a preservative or either singly or in combination. So they will help in the preservation of these prepared pickles and then these pickles they are packed into the glass jars without um, damaging their shape and appearance of the pieces so they are gently placed into the glass jars and then covered with fresh vinegar so so as to fill the interspaces or the gaps that are being formed um, as a result of pouring into the or placing them into the glass jars and then these jars are stored in cool dry place after covering them then before sending to the market. These brined vegetables which are prepared from different methods of process of pickling they are used as a raw material. They are source of uh, base material for preparation of uh, other uh, pickles uh, involving the use of uh, like your spices and vinegar and different combinations even oil, oil can be used for preparation of uh, different types of other pickles using this uh, base vegetables which are being brined. We know salt, lactic acid and vinegar are the ones responsible for the preservation of the pickles. They act as preservatives. How they act as preservatives? The first thing is the salt with a concentration of 15 to 20 percent is used for pickling. So when you use such concentration of uh, salt in the pickles it helps in the prevention of mold and lactic acid forming bacteria so which do not grow at this concentration so this will further firm prevent the fermentation of the pickles and then so these are useful for vegetables which are lacking in their sugar concentrations when the vegetables are lacking in their sugar concentration there is no enough amount of sugar present in them there is no possibility of undergoing fermentation lactic acid fermentation in such cases the presence of this brine will help in the lactic acid fermentation that means at a very high concentration of salt that is 15 to 20 percent 
it prevents mold and lactic acid bacteria and also it prevents fermentation right but it helps in fermentation at lower concentrations for forming lactic acid bacteria i hope i'm clear and it's not contra a contradictory statements how does the vinegar is going to act as a preservative vinegar is nothing but acetic acid this acetic acid helps to preserve the pickles by reducing the ph at a acidic ph bacteria cannot survive so whenever you prepare a pickle the final concentration of the acetic acid in the pickle shall not be less than 2 percentage it shouldn't be less than should be more than 2 percent acetic acid or the vinegar so but you are going to place this vegetables prepared vegetables in a concentration which is well about 2 percentage that is you are going to place these vegetables at around 10 percent strength of the vinegar right so why is the what is the reason for placing them at a very high concentration of uh, vinegar because so whenever you place them in a such high concentration you are going to prevent so if you place them imagine if you place them in a 2 percent vinegar the slowly the uh, moisture or water that exudes or oozes out of the fruits will dilute the acetic acid that is vinegar present in the surrounding tissues thereby the concentration is going down that is less than 2% so to avoid dilution of the vinegar we need to put the or place the vegetables in a high concentration that is 10% strength vinegar and also it also helps in preventing accumulation of gases in the intracellular spaces so it's going to expel the gases it removes the gases that are entrapped in the pickle so whenever you put you pour this 10% vinegar into that it does two purposes one is it prevents the dilution and also it expels the gases that are entrapped instead of using a plain vinegar you can also use a spiced vinegar a vinegar which is uh, um, incorporated with spices so this incorporation of spices can be done either by boiling the spices in the vinegar or by soaking the spices in the vinegar or by adding the essential oils of these spices to the vinegar so that the vinegar the plain vinegar becomes spiced vinegar so this can be used in the packing of the pickles the third preservative which helps in the preservation of pickles is the lactic acid we have now seen salt as a preservative vinegar as a preservative and now the lactic acid as a preservative how this lactic acid acts as a preservative it is the principal component of preservation of the pickles so here the lactic acid bacteria is responsible for the production of lactic acid it causes fermentation and starts producing lactic acid so this lactic acid is the one which is going to preserve the pickles so unlike other bacteria so this lactic acid bacteria can grow even under acidic media so you know that uh, at a ph of around 4.5 and less than that uh, usual bacteria cannot grow but this lactic acid bacteria can grow even under acidic media thereby producing lactic acid and then high salt concentration of 8 to 10% even in the such conditions also this bacteria can grow so that means lactic acid bacteria can grow under conditions which other bacteria cannot grow other bacteria cannot grow under acidic conditions nor under high salt concentration conditions but the uniqueness of this lactic acid bacteria is that it can grow under acidic ph as well as under salt concentration which is 8 to 10% also it can grow whereas other microbes other bacteria cannot survive under such conditions thereby this lactic acid will help in the preservation of the pickles 
till now we have seen different methods of process of pickling so there are different varieties of methods by which a pickle can be prepared which involves either fermentation or no fermentation where there is an involvement of fermentation that includes your dry salting or brining uh, which involves no fermentation that is a method salting without fermentation isn't it and then finally you pack it so those are the the methods or the process of pickling that can be followed right now we will discuss about different types of pickles based on the covering medium that is used in the preparation of the pickles basically the pickles are of two types the first one is the pickles which undergo fermentation those are called fermented pickles the pickles which does not undergo fermentation or which may undergo partial fermentation are called as partial or non fermented pickles in the first case of uh, fermented pickles you have cucumber pickles dill pickles and olive pickles on about which we are going to discuss in detail how to prepare them and under partial or non fermented pickles based on the medium that is being used to cover these pickles either you use salt or you use oil or vinegar or mixture of all these things like salt oil spices and vinegar so these are been different types under partial or non fermented pickles under non fermented pickles also we are going to discuss about a couple of pickles like your mango pickle and lime pickle how to prepare them these are the fermented pickles we are going to discuss in detail about fermented cucumber pickles so we these are the ones which are going to be prepared by using brine and dill pickles are the ones which are added with dill herbs let's see what are those dill is nothing but and the third one is olive pickles how these olive pickles are uh, prepared how to remove the the bitterness in these olives and how to prepare spiced olive pickles so by spicing up the original pickles whatever then it's been prepared by using olive pickles you are going to spice it up by using different spices how to prepare fermented cucumber pickles fermented cucumber pickles are prepared from the immature cucumbers you select the immature cucumbers wash them thoroughly and place them in barrels or tanks which are filled with brines and from here onwards there will be slight change based on the the strength of the brine that is being used so there are two different methods there is a low salt method and there is a high salt method in the case of low salt method initially the strength of the brine is 8% so that means it gives a shallow meter reading of 30 degrees and in the case of high salt method the brine strength is 10.5% and the shallow meter reading gives 40 degrees and the rate at which the brine strength is increased on the weekly basis is the differentiating factor between the low salt method and high salt method in the case of low salt method from the initial 30 degree shallow meter it will be increased at the rate of 2 degrees so weekly you need to increase 2 degrees shallow meter so that you will be reaching a strength of around 50 degrees shallow meter reading right after reaching 50 degrees shallow meter by increasing at the rate of 2 degree each week then after reaching 50 degrees you have to re you have to increase the strength of the brine at 1 degree in every week so the rate has decreased so in the initial stages from 30 degrees to 50 degrees the rise is at the rate of 2 degrees but from 
50 degree till it reaches 60 degree the rise has to be 1 degree whereas in the case of high salt method from the initial 40 degree salo meter to 60 degree salo meter it has to jump from initial high salt concentration to 60 degree salo meter reading at the rate of 3 degree every week you are going to increase the brine strength so the brine strength has to be increased by adding continuous amount of salt this increase has to be 3 degree brine for every week until it reaches a strength of 60 degree salo meter so that's the difference between a low salt method and a high salt method in a low salt method it is at the rate of 2 degree till 50 degrees salo meter and then 1 degree till it reaches 60 degree in the case of high salt method from 40 degree till 60 degree at the rate of 3 degree in every week this entire process of pickling it takes around 6 to 9 weeks for the complete process during the fermentation of the cucumber pickles the most of the lactic acid is produced by a specific bacteria that is lactobacillus plantarum so this causes the production of most of the lactic acid and then at the end of the complete fermentation the titrable acidity is going to be around 0.6 to 0.8 percent and there is a change in the appearance and the color texture of even the cucumbers the cucumbers they change their color from a chalky white to olive or yellow green color so from a opaque color to a translucent color from a uh, light color to a olive or yellowish green color so these are the changes that you observe during the fermentation of the cucumber pickles so whatever the pickles that are being produced uh, by this method of uh, pickling so we'll be getting two salty pickles so these are freshened by soaking them and ma making them into sour sweet sour or mixed pickles dill pickles are nothing but the pickles which are prepared from the cucumber using dill herbs as flavorant they use dill herbs as you can see uh, from the picture that is a dill herb it is very popular uh, in telugu it is called as soy kora so this is a popular herb which is having a strong nice flavor so it gives that specific strong nice flavor to the cucumber pickle along with addition of certain other spices like your garlic and onion so it is dill pickle is nothing but a cucumber pickle which is prepared by addition of dill herbs and other spices olive pickles are prepared from the olives olives basically they are bitter in nature due to the presence of uh, a glucoside the glucoside which is responsible for the bitterness in olives is olerupin this olerupin causes bitterness in the olives so this bitterness has to be removed so the pickles are prepared in three different steps in the preparation of olive pickles first step of preparation of olive pickles is removal of bitterness and the second step involves fermentation and third step involves sorting washing and grading and then putting them in uh, uh, fresh bottles or jars and covering them with a freshly prepared brine so that is how they are being packed olive pickles are prepared from the olives olives basically they are bitter in nature due to the presence of uh, a glucoside the glucoside which is responsible for the bitterness in olives is olerupin this olerupin causes bitterness in the olives so this bitterness has to be removed so the pickles are prepared in three different steps in the preparation of olive pickles for removing the bitterness from the olives 
these are treated in a lye solution of 1 to 2 percent you know what is the lye solution it is nothing but caustic soda so the olives are treated in 1 to 2 percent lye solution so that the bitterness is completely removed and this lye can penetrate up to one half to three fourths towards the pit and and whether this lye has completely removed the bitterness from olives or not can be detected by using a phenophthalene test you can place a drop of phenophthalene if it gives a faint pink color that means the bitterness has been completely removed so you can remove the bitterness by treating the or uh, by dipping these fruits in a lye solution once the bitterness is removed by testing with a phenophthalein indicator uh, then they are uh, subjected to fermentation Be before subjecting them for fermentation whatever the lye that is there adhering it has to be thoroughly washed and sent for fermentation so they are uh, placed in so the washed fruits are placed in barrels so with a brine strength of 10 to 15 percent so over a period of time it gets diluted and the strength will be the st bright strength will be leading to six to nine percentage after once it stabilizes once the fruits uh, and the brine stabilizes it will be leading to six to nine percent what's the percentage of uh, a brine that is required for uh, 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 lactic acid fermentation it needs around 8 to 10 percent so make sure this 8 percent is not gone down below this uh, concentration so that your lactic acid fermentation is continued without any obstruction now during the fermentation the entire salt concentration has to be maintained at around 7 to 8 percent so which will help in the successful fermentation so this can be maintained by adding more salt you need to make sure this the concentration is maintained around 7 to 8 percentage so this entire lactic acid fermentation takes around 6 to 9 months so the entire process completes in a period of 6 to 9 months and then you need to maintain a temperature of 29 degrees celsius for this rapid fermentation process the fermentation of the pickles is carried out in three different stages in the initial stage of fermentation which lasts for 7 to 14 days in this stage the brine starts stabilizing and then the food from the for the microbes so which is in the olives will emerge out and will be available to the microbes so the food is made available to the microbes in the first stage that is leaching and in the second stage which is known as the intermediate stage that is which lasts for two to three weeks this lactobacillus brevis so this particular lactobacillus species begins to grow so this starts producing lactic acid and the final stage lactobacillus plantarum will become predominant it will predominate brevis and the plantarum will emerge as a predominant species and this starts producing lactic acid and this completes the fermentation and final acidity after fermentation will be reaching at around 0.721 percent with a pH of 4 to 3.8 or even lower so once the fermentation is completed so these olives are sorted out and then they are graded and washed thoroughly and they are packed into the jars and they are covered with fresh brine with a concentration of around 7% which is consisting of edible lactic acid so whatever the lac uh, brine that is being used for stabilizing stabilization and even for fermentation that is entirely discarded and before packing them they are filled with fresh brine which is consisting of edible lactic acid and these jars they are pasteurized at a temperature of 60 degree celsius which are brined at 
79 to 82 degree celsius for keeping quality for keeping them at a very long periods of time so that means they can be preserved either by pasteurization at 60 degree celsius these jars are allowed to pasteurize at 60 degree celsius or they can be kept for a longer periods of time by pouring brine which is having a temperature of 79 to 80 degree celsius so that will help in the further preservation of these olive pickles for preparation of spiced pickle or spiced olive pickle you can use the olives which are fermented from the previous pickle just now we have seen the preparation of fermented olive pickle so after fermentation of this olive you can use such olives from these olives or drained or whatever the brine that is there the brine has to be drained and it need to be dried under the shade the dried fermented olives are used you just you need to remove the excess moisture on the surface of the olives after fermentation and then fry the onions garlic and ginger in the oil and these are fried in the oil and to this mixture you are going to add the uh, surface dried olives and then after that you are going to mix the powdered spices like your cumin cardamom black pepper and a little amount of salt and turmeric and then they are mixed thoroughly and later while packing you are going to add acetic acid and sodium benzoate as a preservative for the glass jars and finally they are uh, filled with edible oils like your mustard oil and sealed and stored in a cool dry place till now we have seen from the fermented pickles cucumber pickles dill pickles olive pickles and even uh, spiced olive pickles so now we will discuss about uh, partially fermented pickles or unfermented pickles under which uh, based on their uh, covering use either salt or oil or vinegar or a mixture of spices oil salt vinegar so they are of uh, different types under this category we will be dealing about uh, a preparation of a mango pickle and the lime pickle for preparation of mango pickle we need the following recipe wherein we need a 1 kg of mango slices 200 grams of salt 10 grams of red chili powder 10 grams of turmeric powder 5 grams of asafoetida that is hing and then uh, 10 grams of each of uh, black pepper cardamom fenugreek cinnamon and cumin this is the process for preparation of mango pickle wherein select a mature green pickled variety of mango then wash it thoroughly cut into pieces remove the seed or the kernel out of it and then the fruit pieces need to be thoroughly mixed with the salt and turmeric and these fruit pieces have to be filled into the glass jars and these glass jars keep them covered and put it in the sunlight for a period of 7 to 10 days and then whenever uh, it's possible like uh, two to three times in a day they need to be shaken well at for proper mixing uh, during the period of drying so during its drying process needs to be shaken the contents of the jar needs to be shaken after thorough drying then we need to add the spices so which are properly powdered to the well dried mango slices and these mango slices they are stored in a cool dry place and these are the ingredients that needs to be used for the preparation of a lime pickle so 1 kg of lime uh, I need to add around 200 grams of salt uh, 15 grams of chili powder along with uh, 10 grams each of black pepper cardamom and cumin sweet pickles of the same mango and the lime can also be prepared 
just by adding uh, 500 to 700 grams of jaggery or sugar to make it as a sweet pickle and this is the process for the preparation of lime pickle wash the limes cut them into pieces and then from these pieces squeeze out the juice so partially like one fourth of the juice may be squeezed out and then to this juice to the extracted juice from the lemon pieces you are going to add salt and the powdered spices whatever the spices are there they are powdered and then the salt and the spices are added to the juice and the juice is added to the other pieces and then they are filled into the jars and the g these jars are covered and then uh, they are placed in the sunlight for about four to six days so once uh, during the process of this uh, drying under sunlight the jars they need to be shaken the contents of the jars need to be shaken uh, for two to three times during the drying process and then after four to six days so the pickle will be ready and they are stored in a cool and dry place these are some of the defects that you observe during the storage of the pickles first one is blackening blackening of the pickles is caused as a result of formation of ferrous sulfide you also have studied in the uh, canning so formation of uh, black coloration or discoloration of the canned product similarly here so when there is an iron that is traces of iron and that get into the pickle either from the uh, brine or from the machinery or the equipment that is being used for the preparation of uh, pickles so it forms a discoloration or blackening of the pickles or else it may also be due to the um, microbial spoilage when there is a microbial spoilage it also causes blackening of the pickles when curing is not done properly so when there is uh, no proper curing when the translucency is not being uh, attained or the color change is not being attained during the curing process when you or add salt to the produce or the fruits or vegetables it won't change its color texture and flavor so that is due to insufficient curing or using the water which is uh, poor quality maybe uh, strong water or hard water uh, will cause a production of uh, pickles which are dull and faded and sometimes the vegetables will become shriveled or shrunk as a result of uh, placing these cucumbers or vegetables in a solution which is highly concentrated maybe a brine or maybe vinegar so if you place them directly in high concentrations uh, they may lose their shape leading to a shrink on shriveled nature or appearance so this can be prevented by initially placing these vegetables in a low concentrated uh, brine solution and gradually increasing their strength to the required concentration another major problem that you come across uh, in the storage of pickles is softness and slipperiness so this is caused due to the action of bacteria so when there is no sufficient concentration of back, uh, brine or when there is a, a weak brine or there is a poor amount of uh, brine for covering of the a pickle in such cases uh, there is in chance of uh, bacterial spoilage so either the strength of the brine is less or the covering of the brine is less so in such cases there will be bacterial growth so this can be prevented by using a proper concentration of the brine and filling the pickles completely they must be submerged under the brine so that it can prevent so this type of problem like softness and slipperiness sometimes you may end up in getting pickles which are tasting bitter so this may be due to the very strong vinegar that is being used or it may also be due to the spices that are allowed to cook for a very long time when the spices get burnt so due to the burning of uh, or overcooking of these spices or roasting of these spices it may lead to bitterness or it may be due to the excess amount of spices being used in preparation of these 
pickles so that will cause bitter taste in the pickles and you will see a white growth on the surface of the pickles so which is known as scum so this scum is nothing but yeast or moldy growth on the surface of the pickles so this causes prevention of formation of lactic acid by the lactic acid bacteria that is one problem that will encounter because of the production of this scum is not only that it will also lead to the encouragement of the growth of putrefying bacteria so it will retard the production of lactic acid and encourage the production of putrefying bacteria so that will make uh, just now we have seen another defect that is the softness and slipperiness of the vegetable pickles so this can be prevented by removing the scum as soon as it is formed or by addition of 1% acetic acid even if this acid is added 1% acetic acid is added this will not affect uh, the formation of lactic acid but at the same time it will prevent the growth of wild yeast cloudiness or fogginess a kind of uh, malady or defect you will see in stored pickles so this kind of uh, defect you will see in vegetables solid vegetables like your onion cucumber and olives so in these tissues the acetic acid will fail to penetrate when this acetic acid will fail to penetrate it has no uh, effect against uh, spoilage causing bacteria it is unable to prevent the growth of spoilage causing bacteria in such cases bacteria the spoilage causing bacteria or putrefying bacteria thrive and grow and it gives an appearance of turbid and foggy or cloudy kind of appearance which is a clear indication of it's a spoiled pickle so for such pickles it is recommended to use a brine and vinegar of a proper strength which will prevent this cloudiness because if you use such uh, uh, concentrated uh, brines and vinegars it will penetrate into the tissues of these solid vegetables and can prevent the cloudiness certain blemishes you will see on the surface of pickled onions on the onions white blotch is seen on the first layer of the skin so this type of blotches are called as blemishes in pickles so these blemishes are caused as a result of two cases either it may be due to improper fermentation either the fermentation is not complete or brine is not completely drained so the pickling can be done either by fermentation or by curing so if the fermentation is not properly done or curing is not properly done so after curing and there will be a brine so that brine has to be completely removed so if the brine is not completely removed or if the fermentation is not properly done then you will end up in blotches in the onion and regarding the use of various ingredients like um, oil in case of oil pickles any vegetable edible oils like rapeseed mustard olive oils can be used and uh, regarding other general characteristics use of only wholesome fruits and vegetables so which are free from pests diseases insects insect attacks and any kind of rotting and all the ingredients that are being used should be thoroughly clean and uh, they should be free from uh, any dirt debris and uh, you are supposed to use only the substances uh, that are uh, like spices salt sugar jaggery onion garlic benzoic acid and some of the soluble calcium salts can only be added and the pickles shall always be free from this material like copper alum or mineral acids or any other preservatives apart from the above mentioned substances they should be free from all these things so then only it can be categorized as the um, pickle which is suitable for packing and the commercial usage these are the minimum specifications for the preparation of pickles and the minimum percentage of uh, salt 
is should be around uh, 12 percent and the acidity should not be less than 1.2 percent the salt concentration should be 12 percent and acidity should not be less than 1.2 percent